<clears throat> so good afternoon everybody uh so on mondays i want to make it a point something that god has uh been brought to my attention he's he's told me that he wants me to get more organized and and just kind of like um write things down and preach in a way where so for example everybody functions different one of the ways that i function is when i write things down things come out much better than i just when i just freestyle and because i don't edit my videos um a lot of my videos if somebody catches it in the beginning and they you know it, it's daunting or it's slow or this or that they just tune out and then the rest of my video it's almost like hey you know there's good nuggets there pearls etc but hey the person tuned down because you know it wasn't entertaining enough etc so um you know there, there's there's a flow when it when it comes to preaching and teaching where some of it is to have like um it's like this humor kind of like uh, bringing that what the bible refers to as salt you know make it salty so that people are thirsty enough to want to drink you know come come forth etc and then it's not just um it's not just like preaching the word but making it making it fruitful to the people that want to come and eat so i don't know if that makes any sense but there's more dynamics to this whole thing than just saying what the bible says keeping somebody's attention it's like you gotta be patient you gotta you know do the things so i'm learning the craft of how to perfect it all okay but today's message is on how god speaks and moves so intuition is one of the ways that god speaks and moves uh, there's 12 things here god will never go against his word so we understand that it's the holy bible it's the holy spirit right and so holy is the primary word there that we have to remember that god is holy and pure right and he's called us to be holy and pure right when we are saved and sanctified filled with this holy spirit born again he's called us to live a righteous life right and um so god when i say when i say um to to be that god will speak through intuition it will never lead you astray to the dark side it will never lead you to a desolate place it will always be fruitful it will always be a place of plentiful multiplication it will always produce life so keep bear that in mind as we go forward and i say things like signs and wonders god won't give you a sign and wonder that 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 depletes you that destroys you that hurts you it, you know god god is into building the devil's into destroying so understand that so then um going from that avenue let's uh begin with number one which is intuition god speaks through intuition he uses the holy spirit to usher his people the bible says that uh, god's people are led by his holy spirit and so uh, intuition is one of the ways the holy spirit ministers unto us the holy spirit ministers to us through conviction through intuition through words of knowledge to um words of knowledge prophet prophecy um sometimes visions dreams so the uh, holy spirit has many different ways to come at us and sometimes it's just in our mind that he'll speak to us i know that i i hear uh god a lot in my mind um you have to test the spirit sometimes the 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 spirits um want to act like it's god but it's not right so you have to test the spirits to see if it aligns with the word and that's something that you always want to filter out to make sure that it's god uh god will if when it's god you can go and track it in the word and say okay that's god right if you ever find yourself in a position where you don't know if it was god or not um it does it line up with his word that's a good way to understand so conscience your conscience um will speak to you so uh, god will also uh, speak through prophets and people i know i'm going a little fast but um but we're going to get somewhere here so prophets and people you know you want to make sure that they're not um what the bible refers to as a wolf in sheep clothing right there's prophets out there that um come with the attire of a pastor they they look a certain type of way but inwardly they're ravenous wolves and you can always know them by their fruit so understand this people will always leave a trail of who they really are if you ever want to find out who somebody is don't just hear them because words are like diversions 
they, they want you to look a certain type of area. You're looking over there, but really they're operating from over here, right? Whenever somebody's grooming, as an example, grooming a child, let's say an older person is grooming a child, they're telling that child all the right things. So the words are acting like a diversion, but really their intentions behind the scenes are the ill. Like they have motives that slowly but surely the motives will start to show okay and um that's a good word for a lot of people um to to understand that if you just look at their actions it will reveal what they really have in their heart right now judgmentalness you have to be careful with all of that because you know there is error, there is mistakes, but you want to see the intention behind the heart. You want to see repentance, you want to see, you, you want to give grace, right? But you also want to see if there's a pattern. If, when you ever you see a pattern, then be weary because a pattern leads to a lifestyle. Whoever practices a wrong thing, then that means that that's part of their nature. And then you don't have to wonder who they are anymore, that's part of their nature. And so. And so um, we understand that God forgives and God has mercy and grace, but we also want to understand that there's people that have a bad heart out there and they don't have a good heart. So they don't mean you well. So then if they're saying all the right things, but doing all the wrong things, then that is specifically what I would define a, a wolf in sheep clothing as, okay? So, so be careful with that. And, um, so God will speak through your conscience, through dreams, through prophets slash people. Be careful who you listen to and what you accept. I want you to understand something, and this is key. This is very important. Whenever somebody speaks into your life, when you give somebody permission to speak into your life, um, they, you have given them keys right, to yourself. And if those words that they, they speak over you, if, um, if they're if they're poisonous or you know fruitless if they're uh destruction in nature then those seeds will be sown into you and you will carry those seeds everywhere you go until you get the revelation that you have power and dominion to cast things out when god said you have power on earth to bind and to loose Whatever you bind on earth is, loosed in, uh, is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. When you figure out that you have more control over situations than what you think you are, you never have to be a victim ever again in your life. So, for example, me, when I'm going to a new church and I'm not really familiar with the people there, and somebody says to me, hey, can I pray for you? I'll tell you my... my, my uh, the steps of what I go through. I say, okay, you can pray for me. I'm weary of anybody laying hands on me. That's number one. And the reason why is because I live a clean life. And if they're contaminated, then they can transfer over to me their contamination. Now, of course, what I just told you about binding and loosing is available to me. So basically, if they transfer something to me, then at that particular point in time, I will feel it come into my life as a spirit. And so then at that point, I just, I, I, I pray and I bind that thing and I cast it out. And I remain diligently after that thing until it leaves. Now it leaves in, in, in different forms. One, you can burp it out. Two, you can uh, yawn it out. You can cough it out. You can spit it out. You can vomit it out. But usually a manifestation will come to where you find that that thing released you. And it only released you for one reason, one reason only, is because you attacked it. Don't become friends with these things that are in your life that are not meant to be in your life. They're there to obstruct justice, to obstruct you from reaching your goals and destination with God. They're there on a mission. And so they come as sometimes as familiar spirits. They come sometimes as generational curses. They come sometimes as hindrances to your walk of faith. They come sometimes as um, like bondage like yokes, like, um, like chains and shackles. They come sometimes as, as um, a friend, but really they're an enemy. And in other words, they, they, it's, it's all like fun and games and entertainment, but really the fun and games and entertainment come to just steal, kill and destroy in your life. And you see the, 
and I'll, and I'll, and I'll mention what I mean. Like my, my uh, cousin, she's homeless right now. She's, she just got out of jail. She's been baptized. She's given her life to Jesus. She's done the Bible study. She knows the word of God, but she never let go of the devil's hand. And so when we told her everything about God, she was interested in God. She wanted to know God. She was uh, in with God, but at the same time, she was in with smoking weed. She was in with drinking and partying and going with her friends. And this is the type of spirits that come to lead people astray. And those spirits make out to be the world something that is entertaining and it's hard to leave and it's all the flesh and etc and these are the things that ultimately destroy a human being and so it's a battle for the soul it's a battle for that that person's um destiny and it's a battle for everything so in the end the person has to make a conscious decision to decide now the Bible has a lot to say about this. The Bible says, can a person drink out of two cups? Can the person drink out of God's cup and demons cups? Can they sit down on a table with demons and God? Of course not. So it, it sounds ridiculous, but a lot of people do it. And a lot of people are playing both sides of the fence. When God called us to be separate and set apart, and he told us to live a certain type of lifestyle that honors him. If you you know commit sin if you fall short of the glory of god then that is one thing if you are weak one day that is one thing if you if you are struggling and fighting a um a specific sin uh that is haunting you and it's hard to overcome that is one thing um i believe that god the way that god handles this i believe that god looks at the heart I believe that God sees the heart of the individual. If they love the sin, that's one thing. If, they, if they're resisting the sin, but they fall in the resistance, they fall, they give in. I believe that's another thing. I believe, this is my personal belief. Um, uh, I believe that it, when a person loves their sin, they'll make room for it. And they'll, make, they'll accommodate it in their life and they'll defend it to other people. And so when somebody says, hey, you shouldn't smoke weed, they'll say, hey, weed's a plant. Weed is natural. What, you know, get off my back. Stop being so religious. Stop being so uh, paranoid or legalistic, you know. Uh, God made this, you know. It, 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 you know, what does it do? It doesn't do anything bad. So they'll accommodate it to defend it so they could stay in their life. There's other people that have sin in their life, right? And they're fighting this thing. And it's in their life. And they say, man, I really hate this thing. I don't want it. And so behind the scenes, they're praying, they're fasting, they're asking God to remove it. And it's a battle. It's a battle where they're good for a certain amount of time and then they fall. And then they feel guilt, shame for falling. And they repent and they say, God, man, I'm so sorry that I fell. That person's heart is different than the person that accommodated uh, room for that uh, sin to bear fruit in their life. So I believe that there is a difference. And I believe that... I believe in deliverance, right? I believe that God can deliver us, right? But God is looking at a heart at all times. I believe that we serve a God that he looks more at our heart than he looks at our lips. Now, a lot of people give him lip service, but our heart is far from him. And so we want to make sure that our heart is directed towards him and that our heart is speaking louder than our words and that our actions follow what our heart is saying. In other words, Actions do speak louder than words. And so faith without works is dead. And so when we go forward and we say we believe in God, right? Like this is the way the Bible puts it. If we say we love God and hate our, 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 our neighbor, then we're liars. Because how could you, and this is what the Bible says, how could you say you love God and hate your brother that is made in God's image? Right? And so it's like one of those things that, it, it ties into the fear of God. It ties into the respect, the reverence, the love of God. It ties into relationship with God and spending time with God. Because the more you spend time with God, the more you know God, the more you want to follow His footsteps. There's going to be stumbling along the way. So this perfection type of walk of, oh man, I'm, I, 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 I'm never going to make a mistake. I, I just don't think that that is... Uh, available to anybody on earth if that box was available I'd check off that box and I say man make me perfect so I never have to sin ever again in my whole entire life I wish I had never sinned but you know the Bible says that those that those children the children of God um, they don't sin right 
And so it's one of those things that I believe tracks back to a person's investment with God. And their investment is in heaven. Their investment is knowing God. Their, 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 their eggs are, are in the basket of, right? The treasure is in the, in the basket of knowing God. And that trumps everything in this world. And so if there's anything of value in this world for you, then I think that we need to come to a place where the Bible says that, that we have to come to a place of hating this world. And I'm not talking about creation. I'm talking about the system. I'm talking about the way things conduct themselves, the pervertedness, the corruption, the, the hatred, the vileness, right? You should hate all of that. You should not want to partake in any of that. The darkness should make you want to throw up. And, um, and so anybody that's treating somebody else like their mother or father, uh, that's talking back or cussing at their father, that should make you angry, right? And, and, and it would make you angry if you spent more time with God, if you knew God's word more, if you, if you were more dedicated to God, then the things that God hates becomes part of you. And you are so close to God that everything he loves becomes part of you as well. And, and then this is, comes with practice and time and patience and perseverance. And it comes, it comes with, a, 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 like most of all, it comes with a, 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 him drawing you in and you submitting, putting your arms up and saying, I'm coming, you know, there, there's nothing in this world. Once you come to the recognition that there's nothing in this world to offer you of any kind of value, etc. Like there's no eternal prospect in this life that is gonna really do it for you. All the rich people, all the famous people, they're all on air, on live, telling everybody else, hey, listen guys, you know, it, it's not all here, you know? They've said it so many in, in, interviews, and they're telling you, like, it's an illusion that millions of dollars is gonna make you, um, like, put you on a pedestal and you're just gonna have prob problem-free life. It's like an illusion, it's not, it's not really. That's not how it goes. You know, the, the truth of the matter is, is that if you have addictions and you got a million dollars, your addictions just grew by a million, right? Like your problems just get transferred over and they just grow with the availability to funds now that give you resources to get more uh, problems. So that's another video. But let's end this video with how God speaks and he moves. He, he moves with... Um, inspiration slash visions i don't know if i mentioned how peter got a vision when he was meditating on god in a roof and he was um you know he was told to kill and eat and it was a blanket with a lot of animals on it and god said kill and eat and then he said no those animals are unclean and, and god told him don't call unclean what god has made clean and so then he was ushered and to go with some people that were on their way um there were strangers and yet the holy spirit said go with them because i have sent them to you and um that led to some salvations happening when peter obeyed and so god will talk through inspiration and visions he'll talk through signs and wonders and favor and grace he'll never go against his word and sometimes god will deposit seeds in you that act like promises uh that come in the form of a prophecy that you know that are pending that you haven't reached that destination yet that checkpoint yet to really cash in on that promise but nevertheless god's saying this is something that's going to be happening in your future and for everybody it's something different but it's something that's embedded in their their life that god says one day you're going to have a husband a wife a children a house money or this or that and it's something that is a promise it's a prophecy it's a seed in, inside so that's god's eternal uh god's eternal word in that person and they know that it's god because it never goes away it travels with them wherever they want wherever they go and it's like if he gave that word yesterday it could have been 50 years ago but that word is is ever present in their life like as if he gave it yesterday so it's illuminating in the darkness so to speak and so these are the way god speaks and he moves and so I'll tie everything up by saying that God is wanting covenant and relationship with each and every one of us. Um, when we vow something to God, keep your vow to God, right? 
God is after the broken. You know, he, he delivers people. He delivers the captives, right? God's heart is to rescue the blind, the deaf, and the dumb, meaning the people that can't see that he's real, hear that he's here. Like, the Bible talks about having an ear to hear, let them hear. Not everybody has an ear to hear. Some people hear this exact same message. Some people will say, thank you, brother, for this message. And they'll really appreciate it. Other people hear the exact same message and they hear blah, 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 blah. And they never got to the point where they received any anything because their heart is not ready for the word. So God is now plowing their heart so that he can deposit the seeds of eternal life into their heart so that they can then... Um, he can breathe his breath into their um, soul so that they can be made aware of his kingdom so that, that then when they hear this word it edifies them and it builds them up some people are spiritually dead and they need to be brought to life and so God is good and um, that's today's video God bless you every Monday we're gonna do a sit down video like this where it's nice and organized and um, and so it's just a little bit different than just freestyling off the top of the, the dome. So God bless you. Hope you got something from this.